All right, Gonky. What's going on? Uh, we're about to watch some Maverick, some Top Gun, some yeah. Hornet action. Yeah. No. Uh, here's uh, Chief Driving Instructor Doug. Brandon, you guys probably remember Neil from way back in the day. Way, way back. We brought Brandon so there was somebody more bald than me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're going to yell Tomcats. Yes, we are. Yeah, but Tom spoiler Cat. alert, is there Tomcats in there? There's Tomcats. Tom Tom they're, they're in the previews, so. Probably, you know, <laughs> standard Super Hornet screws it away, right? Right, yeah, and they had to bring in the Tomcat. <laughs> had to bring in the Tomcat to fix it. Okay. All right, well, we'll give a review after. Well, hello. It's Gonky and Mover. Welcome. You're just going to sit there and look pretty like you said you were going to do. Okay, Gonky. I said hello. <laughs> we are. We watched Top Gun Maverick yesterday. We're going to do a review live. We, you know, we'll do the review stuff, about 30 minutes, and then I'm going to edit this eventually to make it its own video. But we'll do live Q&A and all that stuff after. But first... I want to make sure this is no spoilers, or at least to the best of our ability. So I'm going to read what this is about so that we make sure we know from the website. After more than 30 years of service as one of Navy's top aviators, Pete Maverick Mitchell, Thomas Cruz, is where he belongs, pushing the envelope as a courageous test pilot and dodging the advancement and rank that would ground him. When he finds himself training a detachment of Top Gun graduates, for a specialized mission the likes of which no living pilot has ever seen. Maverick encounters Lieutenant Bradley Bradshaw, call sign Rooster. The son of Maverick's late friend and radar intercept officer, Lieutenant Nick Bradshaw, a.k.a. Goose. Facing an uncertain future and confronting the ghosts of his past, Maverick is drawn into a confrontation with his own deepest fears, culminating in a mission that demands the ultimate sacrifice from those who will be chosen to fly it. So there's your there's your guidelines. And for the first time, see you guys, I've never done this before, so bear with me. This is the first time I've actually had a sponsored video. I've partnered up with Thrustmaster for uh, just the Top Gun Maverick videos. So thanks to them. Uh, you guys know I've actually used Thrustmaster in all the DCS videos, uh, used the, the grip, uh, which actually I think they even use it in the movie. Uh, Gonky, you've used it for uh, when you went and did the DCS video. It's very realistic. So we've partnered with them. And... For you guys, if you go to the uh, description, there's a promo code for the T-Flight HOTAS 4 uh, that'll give you 20% off. And what that is, is it's a starter. You know, it's not like the Warthog, but it is something to get you going. You know, if you're just looking for something entry level, it's pretty good. I started with this like way back in the day. So they've been developing this for a while. I think it's good for uh, PlayStation 4 and all that stuff. So eventually they're going to send me one and I'm going to give this away on the channel and also give away a Hornet uh, grip. So uh, cool stuff. Thanks for them for doing that. This is just the Top Gun Maverick videos, nothing else. Again, first time we're doing this. So I uh, want to thank them for that. And also, standard disclaimer, views represent, <laughs> presented by me or my guests or my own and do not represent those of the DoD or its components. With that out of the way, uh, check out the description for the link for that. Let's talk about <coughs> Top Gun Maverick and our spoiler-free review. Um, we're, so we're going to structure it, right? We're going to do five things we loved, five things we hated. This is not Mover Ruins movies. We'll do that when it comes to digital. We'll give people time to watch it before we actually start ruining it. And then we'll do an overall uh, Gonky score and a Mover score. So, Gonky, you are my guest. For those of you that don't know Gonky, Gonky flew. How could you not know Gonky? I mean, honestly, at this point, <laughs> you know, what, are you, what are you doing here if you don't actually know the Gonky? Um, so, for those of you that don't know Gonky, uh, super Hornet or Hornets, Super Hornets, uh, Malaysian Hornets, VFA 204 Hornets, most recently T-38A Adversary Air with me, uh, currently an unemployed fighter pilot like myself <laughs> and, uh, kind of. just like Maverick, just like Maverick, he gets fired everywhere he goes. Uh, my background, <laughs> Vipers, uh, F-16s in the Air Force. I flew Hornets at VFA 204. Strike Patron 204, and then I flew T-38s. I've also been fired everywhere I've gone. So, uh, as the comments have now said, uh, the truth is, Gonky is the real <laughs> Maverick. So, uh, Murder Hornets. Let us begin. Gonky, 
Uh, we watched the movie last night in the early showing, which is not as cool as some other people that got to see it weeks ago. But right. we went. It was a cool theater. You guys got to see that. We brought Doug. Doug has been on the channel before. Chief Driving Instructor Brandon for the helicopters. And Neil uh, rides with me with the sheriff's office every now and then. Really fun time. Great experience. What a great, you know, we, we saw it in the biggest screen possible, um, which I thought Dolby Atmos and all that stuff. I thought it was uh, really good. So, dude, over to you. Five things you loved <laughs> about Top Gun Maverick. <clears throat> all right. Um, <clears throat> so the five things I liked the most, I mean, I, <laughs> for those of you who haven't seen it, you definitely have to see it on the big screen. I, I'll throw for sure. it out there. Yep. So the five things I loved about it, hopefully not spoiling too much. I think my most favorite thing is the the Tomcats alive in it. Tomcats, so, yeah, Tomcats, um, baby. Spoiler. There, there was a. It, it was in the. It was in the yeah. preview, so we're not spoiling anything. Tomcats, yeah. got it. Yeah, Tomcats is number one. I mean, you know, I, I, <laughs> I obviously I was uh, it, the original inspired me, and the airplane was a big, big part of. Uh, of that yep. um i really so number two and three so i love the fact they've got uh val kilmer in there for my number two um yeah. i really thought that was cool how they wove him in to the uh to the movie and then i i also like the fact that uh goose's son is back as a pilot <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't be bothered to be a wizzo so and following dear old dads well he saw what happens he sees what happens to the wizards he's like i'm not going down that road yeah. um so that's three uh and then my last two are kind of like if you're a single seat hornet guy there's two things you make fun of wizzos and fat amy and it's covered <laughs> <laughs> so those are my yeah. top five so and fat that's amy's top, the f-35 F for you guys who don't know. Yeah. All right. So my top five. Well, I agree with all of those things. I think that's awesome. I think you stole some of mine, too. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I didn't put them in any particular particular order, but Tomcats, for sure. The the entire Everything with the Tomcat. Dude, I think some of the Tomcat stuff looked more realistic than the real jet flying. You know, because we, we, yeah. we know there's no flyable Tomcats. They didn't go to Iran and actually get Iranian Tomcats because those are the only ones that are left. Uh, they didn't, but I thought those sequences looked really good and for, you know, not being real jets, it really looked good. It still had the screen presence that the Tomcat had in Top Gun one. Uh, I was super impressed with, with all of that stuff, you know, plot lines aside, how we got there and all that, whatever, but dude, Tomcats and especially the, just the way they did that, I thought was awesome. They even had details, you know, like little yeah. details about the Tomcat stuff. And so if you're like a DCS player that is familiar with the Tomcat, especially the A model, you'll be like, oh, I know why he did that. Oh, I know why he did that. Like they had those little details that I think, you yeah. know, more hardcore fans are going to appreciate. So I thought that was really cool. The second thing, the cinematography. Uh, and this will actually be both a plus and a minus. So when we get to the negative, that it's actually both ways because on the plus side, dude, they did some awesome cinematography with these aircraft. I mean, just, you know, stuff that wasn't possible before. Cinejet did an amazing job, um, you know, with the air-to-air -air shots. Having the actors in the backseat doing the, the real stuff was really cool. Uh, just amazing cinematography for this movie. And it really sets the bar. Like you're looking at it going, even if the plot is stupid, if, you know, if I like, if I like nothing else about this movie, it's jet porn. And you're like, I can sit here, suspend disbelief. I don't care if it's yes. right or wrong. This is awesome. I'm having a great time. The third thing was the score. You know, a lot of people don't mention that, but the music was awesome. Like they yeah. paid such a great tribute to the first one that this is, you know, the first time you hear it, you know, some of the, the songs from the first one in this, you're like, America. Yes. Yeah. You know, and that, that that whole opening sequence is awesome. You know, I mean, some people, somebody commented on something else I was reading. They're like, I thought I was in the wrong movie. I thought they were playing the first movie over again because they, because it, but, th but then they, they do it and then they show fat Amy and all that stuff. And you're like, this is still awesome. Like it held up. The music's awesome. The score, oh, yeah. they, they, they played the right music from the first one where they needed to, to bring back the nostalgia. And then they played new music 
also when they needed to. I still, you know, that Lady Gaga song, the first time I heard it, I was like, eh. But after I heard it a bunch of times, I'm like, this is awesome. This really worked. Yeah. And it really worked in the movie, too. Even when there was no lyrics, it really worked. So I thought the score was awesome. And somebody just asked, any song as good as Danger Zone? Danger Zone's in it. You know? Yeah. I mean, it, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it doesn't get any better yeah. than the original Danger Zone when Danger Zone is in it. So I hope that's not a spoiler. Um, the other thing, so the opening scene, you know, or the opening scene, the opening sequence, and then throughout the movie, the nods to the original and the nostalgia, you know, the, the couple of quotes and stuff, I thought that was really well done and not over the top. Like, they didn't just do it for the sake of doing it. It's in context. It's in a right spot. It's something that naturally works. I thought it was it was really good. And, you know, you kind of remind you. So this is a real big nostalgia movie. It's an action blockbuster flick. They did a good job with that. And then finally, what I liked, you know, and, and we'll talk about this on Movie Ruins Movies because there's some stuff. <laughs> yeah. But there's some stuff. Dude, attention to detail. Yeah, they like they actually listen to the advisors and some of this stuff like, you know, when they're calling out the 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 picture clean, you know, he's he's calling for the picture. They got a lot of the comms right. Um, Crazy. <laughs> you know, Bob, the way they the way they depicted Bob was just was just Easy. amazing. You know, Easy. It was just I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> Dude, I think you and I, to be honest, we I think you and I were the only two in the theater laughing. No, we, you know, we burst, we burst out laughing. Oh, nobody dude, else we were annoying it. people how much we were laughing because nobody else was laughing in the theater. But oh. the, the, so the thing was, it was funny when it needed to be funny, but then there was some stuff that was funny and nobody else got. And I was like, okay, you know, this works. So I, I thought it, it, it kept the right tone throughout. But again, there was some attention to detail stuff that you're like, well, good job. You know, you got those little details right in a lot of places. So. All right, so that's the five things. This is the part that, that keeps people happy with us because we said nice things. Now, give me the five things you hated about the movie. Boy, hate's a strong word. I don't I don't really think there's anything I, I hated about the movie, there, but there were some things that I thought uh, definitely weren't done as well as like the things we were just talking about. So um, you know, overall, I thought the movie was really good. Whoa, uh, whoa, like, we didn't get to that part yet, Gonky. Spoiler alert for the review. That's at the end. I'm not getting, hey, they're not, I'm not giving the Gonky score yet. I'm getting ready okay. to go over, <laughs> you're ready to go <laughs> over the My day. bad, my bad. Okay, you're right. This is my with all due respect. <laughs> with all due respect. It's with in the Geneva Convention. If you say with all due respect, anything say you say after that is completely legal. Um, Like in the previews, the, uh, the, the crazy looking black, airplane that uh that he's flying at the beginning that whole the whole that whole part of the story i i didn't i didn't really care for it um <laughs> we'll call that uh the skunk works part um yeah. you talked about the Dark gci stuff. the top yeah the, the gci stuff like you said with the tomcat was good but there was uh a couple areas in the movie where they used the gci that i i mean it was very obvious to me it was like man this is like 10 year old video game uh quality pushing, pushing made, the plot along yeah just trying to push the plot along with gc yeah. versus yeah yeah and i you know the effort they went to make some things real was so right. good that the things that they did do like not so good gc it just magnifies it right so that was a little disappointing um try not to ruin the movie here um there is a uh uh there's a uh, uh, the whole, the whole, there's an engine out kind of scene that, uh, yeah. So yeah. basically, basically they have an emergency, um, and there's just a lot of button pushing a lot of like, well, alarms. that is because they threw the natops in the trash. Once you throw the natops <laughs> in the trash, they would see this. <laughs> don't need well, it that's anymore. where all the emergency procedures are. So once you <laughs> threw that in the trash, there's no, you don't that. know what to do. <laughs> Yeah, you don't know what to do when there's a fire. Well, you just kind of do whatever. You're, right, if you so, think you're dead, if you think you're dead, Gonky, come on. But um, <laughs> obviously, having flown the jet and, and having a similar scenario happen to me, I was like, "What is going on here?" <laughs> so um, that was a yeah. little bit, uh, you know, in, in the original, they had the, you know, the flame out and the flat spin. Well, there was a lot of realism and truth to that, and they they actually 
I think in the original, they did a nice job of like timeline wise, kind of laying that out how that would happen. You know, a flame out would happen, right, right, right. And, you know, blah, blah, blah. So, um, there's a, there's a, there's a sailing scene that I don't understand. <laughs> Dude, no, but you brought up a good point when we were leaving the theater. Cause I said that and you were like, well, wait a minute. Remember what you said? That's yeah, actually really valid. But I don't know. Would they put an entire scene well, well, like well, that share, in there? Share, share it with the audience first. So just give give some context. What did you? All say? right. So we're leaving. We're leaving the, the the theater, and we was like, I don't get that sailing scene. And I was like, Well, you know, the what what struck me about it was, you know, people assume that because you're in the navy, you don't know how to like sail and operate boats. I don't know anything about boats. I I don't even know how an aircraft carrier, hundred thousand tons, can float. Right. So um, <laughs> Maverick Maverick says some things in that scene to the effect of like, I don't know what I'm doing out here kind of thing. So but it was a it was a longer it was it was it was definitely a scene in the movie. And to get that point across, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I, they did call it the boat, too, which will trigger all the shoe clerks. Uh, the, I can add, I'll. I'll add that to my like. <laughs> yeah, they did call it the boat. Because remember one of the first videos yeah. I did, there I called it the boat, and they're like, no, it's a ship. Only boats go underwater. And it's like, no. dude, Maverick specifically it the boat. Maverick yeah. specifically Maverick, said I Maverick land on got it right. Yeah, Maverick so, got it right. All right, next 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 point. Yeah. Um, and that's uh the same was for the fifth thing. Um, I love the P fifty one. It's one of my all time favorite airplanes yes. ever yes but i mean i you can look up what an 06 in the navy makes you can look up what a p51 costs so the realism of it um but and then, did he buy bitcoin at the bottom I, look, I dude, mean he's been an 06 <laughs> for a really long time so that's true that's true but okay there's that part of it and then there's also it's a, it's kind of a naval movie so maybe a corsair, corsair? Yeah. And then, you know, if you remember in the original, like one of my favorite scenes of the original is when they're rolling the credits. It's like, right, the sun setting and the two Tomcats are taking off. And they're in burner and like they're doing yeah. alarm rolls and they're, they're going in and out of burner. And you can actually hear the crack of the motors. I'm like, P51 is cool, but dude, it, it was it was weak sauce compared to the first one, which I get it. It's not the first movie. The P51 stuff was fine. I enjoyed it, but I, I, I thought it didn't quite fit, at yeah. least in my mind. I know Tom Cruise has a real P fifty one, and he's probably like, "I want my plane in this movie." So that's fine. That's fair. But yeah, that's it. Okay, my turn. I'm gonna piss some people <laughs> off now. Oh no! It's time. it's time. It's time to. It's time to. No, this is not Mover Ruins movies, but this is the part where people get mad at me. First thing I hated, the most important thing, uh, actually overall, I'm gonna say one of the things I thought this movie. I had the same complaint about the Batman. I think it's just something with movies today. Maybe it's a pandemic thing. Maybe it's just because, you know, they're like, hey, people will come to see this. These movies, both movies, needed an editor or a producer that knew the word no. You know, so to your point, when stuff comes up and they're like, hey, this is a good idea. Why don't we do this? Or why don't we edit this in? Or why don't we put this in? They needed somebody to say, that's not this movie. Save it for something else. And the biggest point to that is the dark star scene you called it the the skunk works thing or whatever and that's that's probably one of the things i think they could have removed from the entire movie because it had no it didn't advance the plot at all it was cool like the so where i was wrong and i'm gonna say i was wrong uh when i heard about this i'm like god this is gonna be terrible it wasn't terrible like it was a cool scene on its own but it had right. no business being in a top gun movie like it could have right. been an after credits thing. It could have been its own movie. It could have been showing, you know, they could have been like, oh, and, and here's a little mini thing we did for Maverick after the fact or whatever. But it had no business being in this movie. And it was jarring because they go from this really cool, like uh, paying tribute to the first movie. And then they cut to this and you're like, well, why don't they show what the uh, rooster and all those dudes are flying hornets over Afghanistan? Or why don't they show them doing something? And not this nonsense, because it doesn't add anything, and it's just stupid. And did Maverick um, go to it's, test pilot school? Apparently, yeah. They showed his plaque <laughs> when they were scanning. He goes oh, to test okay. pilot school. He's, you know, I mean, it, it didn't, like, it did yeah. nothing for the plot, other than, you know, we introduced the senior master chief that, like, was his personal uh, 
<laughs> guy that just went around. So I think that goes to the point of it just needed an editor. It needed somebody to go, no, let's tighten up the plot. We don't need all this garbage. Um, and the same thing for some of the love stuff, too. I didn't think the chemistry was was there with Penny Benjamin. Like, I just didn't see the chemistry. Like, you know, Tom Cruise has done some Edge of Tomorrow with Emily Blunt. It worked out. Even with Kelly McGillis, you, like, McGillis, you saw the chemistry. And here you're like, what is this even for? Like, what... Maybe I'm, you know, maybe it's because I'm not that demographic. I don't understand it. You know, it's a kind of a, I just, I don't know. I, I didn't think that was all that, that useful. So, and with that, the dialogue. So that the next point would be the dialogue, because there's a lot of points where, you know, they needed the technical advisor to go, no, no Top Gun graduate would ever say that, you know, we're the best. Who's going to train us? And that's in the trailer too. And you're just like, <laughs> It's Who cringy. I know. It's cringy. Yeah, I it's know. like there's so yeah. much bad. I'm telling you, if this movie were not a Top Gun movie and it were not Tom Cruise and you had the, the entire plot with the jets, with the dialogue, people would be like, well, this is Iron Eagle. You know, this is Iron because you, you take away all the cool parts and you have this cringy dialogue and you're like, dude, what, this is not it just doesn't that part didn't work. Um. A lot of hokey stuff in the plot, you know, the push-ups, um, you know, Maverick's BFM school, a, a lot of stuff that we'll get to in Mover Ruins movies that you're just like, well, okay, I mean, it's it's Star Wars. Uh, the Hornet has no screen presence. It is not it is not a Tomcat. Like, a Tomcat you put on the screen and you were like, oh, dude, that's awesome. Even when the Tomcat was on screen in this movie, it was awesome, right? And I, then they... I would I would argue, dude, there is no airplane that has screen presence like the Tomcat. Well, that's true. But like uh, some of these scenes, you're like, is this behind enemy lines or is it like it doesn't like it didn't have the wow factor that the Tomcat had. And what was really disappointing was that triple bubble hornet next to the Tomcat. And you're just like, oh, (laughs) it's so ugly. Oh, it just doesn't have it. And then the final thing I will say before people really get mad at me. Um, <clears throat> I've said this a lot. So obviously it did have visual effects. I've called it CGI in the past. There's obviously CGI in this movie. Otherwise you wouldn't have Su 57s and Tomcats rolling around. I mean, there's no way to get around it. There's computer computer generated graphics, but there's also visual effects. And what, what I mean with visual effects is either they took one, one jet and doubled it to make it look like two jets. They took one jet, made it look like four jets. They made jets look closer. They did post-processing to make stuff look better. And Top Gun, the first one, didn't have that much because the technology wasn't there. I mean, there's really the one scene and there's a couple scenes, which, by the way, we're going to have one of the pilots from that movie uh, on the channel, which will be really, really, really awesome uh, to talk about how they did some of the stuff. But so the technology's there. It's great. You know, it made a lot of scenes. But the problem I had with it is it's so good that some of the scenes, you question all of it, right? So some of it you're like, that's visual effects. I know it's visual effects because they didn't do that. And then some of the scenes that you know are real, you're like, is that visual effect? Because it just looks off. Like the, the flyover scene with the funeral, that missing man. Did, remember I said that? Yeah. I go, hey, I think that's <clears throat> visual effects. And I'm pretty sure in, that was actually the Blue Angels that did that in real life. But it just, it, whether they made it look closer or they did something, yeah. <clears throat> it just looks off. And there, you yeah. could tell that they edited some stuff out. And because we watched it on such a big screen... You know, like I could see the IMAX cameras in Mover or Mover Mavericks uh, visor in some of them, you know. So you're like, OK, yeah, I know he's, you know, he's here, but he's not there and stuff. So I think that kind of took away because they tried to do too much because there's some obvious scenes where it's like, nope, they didn't do this. And then there's some where it's like, did they? I don't know. Um, so maybe a little too much visual effects and they could have just dumbed it down a little bit like the first Top Gun. And still had the exact same movie, but just had real shots. So that's my, uh, however many that is. I hope that's five. Uh, and <laughs> it's now time to, um, it is now time to get, oh, and they sped up a whole, you talked about this after. You've flown Star Wars Canyon. Does it look that fast? Not when I do it. <laughs> <laughs> not, not, not in the jets I flew. <laughs> yeah, I, I just, I mean, so it, it was a little distracting. Um, but that's stuff we can talk about on Mover Ruins movie. So that's that's the the negative overall score. Gonky, what's your overall thoughts and what is? Let, let, hold on, 
Let me get let me get right here. <laughs> what is the Gonky score? Shit. <laughs> well, hey, spoiler alert, it's gonna be an eight. <laughs> um, I, Damn dude, it. look, man, there's you know what I you automatically at least me, I compare it to the first one, right? I watched the first one when I was like eight or nine years old. And honestly, man, when I was a kid, everything in the first time I thought was real. You know, I thought the fight, I thought that's how you fight planes, like up close like that. And, uh, you know, it's like now I've essentially lived that life, uh, which is awesome. And I know too much. So I went to the movie as just wanting to be entertained. And from a, you know, Tom Cruise has always said, you know, he's always tried to be an entertainer. And I, I think he did a really, him and everybody involved did a good job of making a very entertaining fighter jet movie. That's what they were trying to do. Um, there was issues, but I mean, dude, there's issues with the first one now that I know what I know. Right. So, right. Um, I think, uh, from an entertainment standpoint, um, I thought it was a very, very well done movie. Uh, I give it an eight because I hold the original as the gold standard. It's a 10. So it's yeah. in my mind, it's not as good as the, original which i don't think you can ever top that dude at all um yeah but i give it an eight man i i would i i want to watch it again because i'm sure i missed a I lot of you things missed, yeah yeah so i give yeah. it an eight awesome okay all right so the mover score here <laughs> that's like a 12 <laughs> well it was going to be a 6.9 no matter what so that's that is a perfect fighter pilot score yeah um so i thought it was you know, with the pros and cons, I thought it was a very entertaining movie. It's a summer blockbuster. It's one of those turn your brain off. You know, if you don't know anything, it's a cool movie, right? You're like jets. It's awesome. It's loud. You know, this is, this is a lot of fun. Um, it's the plot is decent. Um, you know, it, it, it's just one of those things where you're entertained the whole time. You're not looking at your phone. You're not looking at the watch. You know, you're, you're, you're entertained the entire time. Um, Obviously, there's stuff that's not realistic, but, you know, it's not a documentary. It's just supposed to be fun. What I thought, I guess the only drawback, I think my disappointment, uh, I, I made a tweet about this earlier. Ghostbusters Afterlife, the, the, the two trailers almost came out simultaneously when it first came out, at least as far as I remember. And I was equally excited about both of them because it's the nostalgia and stuff like that. And I think a movie like this um, that... Is called Top Gun, but has nothing to do with the actual Top Gun school. Like the only relationship. Well, it's true. It is Top Gun Maverick. Um, I just thought that they could have done a better job of having an original plot and then bringing in some of the elements from the first one versus rehashing the original, making it centric on Maverick, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And then trying to to go overboard with a lot of concepts and plot points and stuff like that. That was my only complaint. Is like, and that's kind of as a writer where you're just like, eh, you could have tightened this up a little bit and not made it so focused on this one guy and kind of shown the team effort and stuff like that. Um, and shown what because you know the first one was about a school, right? It was about one. It, we followed Maverick and Goose, but it was about you know this this conflict. They go to the school. He overcomes adversity, comes back, he uses what he learns, and he overcomes some anxiety and stuff like that and, and, and wins the day. You didn't have that here. It was more, they took some of that thinking man stuff out of it and made it more pop gun, turn your brain off thing, which is fine. It's still a, a fun movie. It's still a good movie. I just, you know, I expected a little bit more, especially for as long as we've been building this movie up. And that, you know, partly that's me because I expected this you know, you get all this build up and you're like, oh, dude, this is going to be awesome. And I just didn't have that same feeling leaving the theater or finishing the movie as I did with Ghostbusters Afterlife. Because at the end of that movie, I was like, dude, that was awesome. Now, don't get me wrong. There were plenty of points in that movie last night where I was cheering. You know, I was awesome. Like, this is great. The ending is perfect. Like, it's just fun. They just they do a really good job. It's just not a 10. But a 6.9 as a fighter pilot score is still pretty good. You know, it's an above average movie. Yeah, it's a solid score, just not perfect. And I don't think it's better than the original. I don't think you can top yeah. the original. I just don't. No. I don't think, you no. know. And, and you couldn't top the original no matter what. I mean, you really couldn't because the 80s for a fighter pilot 
were such a different gener. I mean, dude, it was that was the peak. You know, that was when it was just the coolest of the cool. So that's it. That's my score. Um, let's see. We will now take questions uh, as well. But remember, you can get the uh, uh, Pro Flight for twenty percent off, and we'll give one away here sh- here soon. Uh, did I show what that is? That's this thing. Yeah, we did that. Okay, cool. And that re- that concludes the review. So I'm going to cut the edit right here uh, for when it goes on the video on demand, so that people don't have to watch the Q and A. But let's see what the commenters are saying. Um, let's say mover your. <laughs> Mover, you're brutal. I'd hate to hear you rate episodes of Adam. T- <laughs> Am I brutal though? I mean, I'm honest. You know, I, I'm, I'm. You know, Mover, I'm, Mover's honest, uh, honest reviews of ruining movies. <laughs> yeah, I'm just an honest guy. Like I don't. Uh, well, see, Doug disagrees. He says the original was actually garbage, other than the flying. Oh, that hurts. Yeah. Uh, that's 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 tough to say let's see here do you think the original og top gun movie would have been as iconic if it featured a different fighter than the tomcat no because flight of the intruder despite being a very good movie does not have anywhere near um the draw of that uh is it 6.9 out of 7 mover uh we'll let you guys decide how wait was that wombat somebody just said how yeah it sure was how sexy was the (laughs) dude (laughs) it was in there dude it was in there and they did a good job it had a role they showed it from the external view and inside Um, remember it was a dark room and everybody had glasses (laughs) yeah yep 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 i i i thought that was a pretty cool uh pretty cool thing uh so yeah, somebody says fingertip formations. Yeah, you expect that kind of thing. You expect that because it's they're it not going to be able to. It was briefed. Yeah. Well, that was that was yeah, it's true. <laughs> we're we're, we're going to be in close. <laughs> right. um, uh, we have not. I don't think we've done a spoiler. Have we done a spoiler? No, we haven't done any spoilers. Uh, let's see. Oh, somebody says we're honestly brutal. Good job. Here we go. Kevin Wells, you are honestly brutal. Good job, guys. Thanks, man. Uh, I, you know, I, you know, it sounds like, but it's it's splitting hairs, right? I mean, dude, I drove like two hundred miles there and two hundred miles back in one day just to watch this, watch this movie, and it was totally worth it. So one hundred percent. What? And I, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna watch it again. You know, I mean, it's yeah. it's not something that's like, oh, dude, you know, I, it it was a well above average movie. You know, I mean, it was yeah. it was an above average movie. It just it it had some things that you know that like, okay, maybe well, they could have fixed this. You, I mean, everyone's measuring it against like, arguably the greatest fighter pilot movie ever made. Right? I mean, like an entire generation, multi generations of fighter pilots were inspired by the first one. So, it, dude, it's, it's t- those are big shoes to fill. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it's a very very tough. Um, tough movie to overcome again though you know i mean it just depends on your angle you know there is no volleyball scene there's a beach beach scene that's, 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 that's thing. <laughs> oh dude oh they said rip the final countdown the final countdown was cool for the jet scenes but the plot was kind of I like the final countdown too, man. It was it was good, and the Tomcat made that movie. I mean, honestly, Jolly Rogers. Did you watch <laughs> it in IMAX? It was uh, what was it like a thirty foot screen? It was the SL awesome. something, whatever movie tavern has. It was this huge screen. Awesome. Uh, Mover and Gonky, do you think knowing what you know took some of the enjoyment from the movie? Oh yeah, yes, yeah, yes. That's why it's tough. It's tough. It's tough on a lot of levels. I mean, number one, you've done it, so you're like, well, that's weird. Because cause as a fighter pilot, you're trained to pick out the stuff that's, that's not right because you bring it back to the debrief. You know, you're yeah. sitting there, you know, that. So, yes, as a fighter pilot, but also, you know, as a creative type, right? Because I've done writing and, and character development, plot, and, and all that stuff, and dialogue. And, you know, but, you sit there and you're like, uh, it, it, it's tough for a, multiple levels. Yeah, but Stephen, on the flip side, um, because we, we have inside knowledge, there were 
parts of the movie that I think only me and Mover got. Yeah, yeah, like the wizard, you know, like Bob. The, the, Bob, the Bob scene, like some, even some of the technical stuff. Like it's like, hey mm-hmm. man, we, that's that's really the code, isn't it? You know, what I mean, yeah. Like there yeah. was there was a lot of little details where I was like, you know, if I didn't, if I hadn't flown those planes and done those things, like I'd just be oblivious to it. But like, and that's that's where I think they did a nice job. They put a lot of details in there. But yeah, but there there were some things that I was like, oh, that's completely not right. But yeah. Yeah, there was I mean, there's a lot work. of there's a lot of Hollywood to it, but then yeah. there's a lot of stuff you're like, well, yeah, you know, yeah. okay, I can see that. That's pretty cool. That's impressive. If they really, you know, if if I were gonna do that in in war or whatever, that would be really cool. Um, all the Tomcat stuff was just, you know, and maybe that's because I never flew the Tomcat. You know, maybe that's where the suspension of disbelief started. And I was yeah. like, oh yeah, you know, okay, cool. You know, it's it's funny because. Doug was in there and he got to the sailboat scene. And he's like, that's, that's not, cause he knows sailing. Right. So he's like, that's, that's not what that means. That's not in this. And you're like, I don't know. I was oh. just sitting there watching it. Cause I have no idea. You know, I mean, it's just, I think it's human nature. Um, it's human nature to do it. So, but they did, you know, kudos to all the dudes that did the flying, um, oh, yeah. the Cinejet guys, kudos to the aerial, you know, this is going to be stuff that's going to be talked about for a really long time. Um, you know, yes, they kind of went overboard, kind of making the scenes prettier with VFX, you know, cause you're like, you know, like I, like I said in the trailer, you know, when they're flying through the snow, you know, it's like, okay, dude, you're not kicking up snow. No one's doing that in real life. Yes. They did fly through mountains, but no, they weren't flying, you know, five feet off the snow enough to kick up, you know, the rooster tails and stuff like that for the plot they had to. And that's pretty cool. But in real life, they didn't, which is different from the first Top Gun, which they just use real flying and just kind of splice the real flying together to make it do what they needed it to do. Um, so, but they did speed up a lot of. They did. I think they did speed stuff up in the first one too. Um, not not like in the one. second. Not like in the second one, dude. <laughs> no, no, they went ludicrous speed in a lot of oh, places. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but but again, you know, so this is a two part series we'll do a mover ruins movies where we'll break down like no kidding. Okay. Uh, this was dumb, but then there were stuff that was like dumb, but rooted in reality. You know, like when, when they got into the canopy to canopy stuff, you're like, well, yeah, but yeah. it doesn't look like that, but that's actually valid. You know, that's actually <laughs> yeah. a real thing. So, um, and then, then of course there's the whole, uh, just fill her up, boys. Take it whenever you need it. You know, <laughs> you know? don't spoil it. Yeah, no security on any military yeah. base ever, especially yeah. after nine eleven. We have no uh, che- no security whatsoever. Checking out airplanes like checking out the golf cart. Hey, who's got the yellow one? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You just sign it out with your name. Uh, so this is actually a good point. And I was talking to my producer friend about this. The absence of Tony Scott not directing it could cause a lowest lower score. That actually, the good point about that is, remember the first one was very gritty. You know, it yeah. had that like that opening scene. It was very gritty. Everything's dirty and stuff. This was a lot cleaner, a little cleaner, a little brighter. It it just didn't have the grit. So and that's a director, right? That's a director's image and vision of what he's seeing so yes that's true but that's also the to- the tomcat versus hornet the hornets are, even though if you go out on the ramp they're all leaking and they all have muddy or hydraulic boot prints all over them you know uh it, it's just a little bit cleaner so i mean that is a that is a good point um well there was the one good drunk guy that rammed hornets with his car at nas lamore yeah yeah there is that um yeah um so any easter eggs for real pilots yes quite a few quite a few easter eggs for people that uh understand the lingo understand the industry understand stuff all right here you go would this movie make your top five aviation films gonky yeah i think it would it'd be close It'd be close. Yeah. <clears throat> it'd be close. I mean, I think it's there, but it'd, yeah. be, it'd be very close. Um, it's somewhere in the uh, three to five. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 very close. Um, I liked Firebirds, though. 
<laughs> okay, so everything he has said is now invalid. Everything I've said, <laughs> but no, but, but, wait, 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 wait. Firebirds had some really good aerial cinematography, dude. The Apaches were cool. The, no more credibility itself, remover. Yeah, it, that's the end of that. I, I, uh, dude, just kidding. Uh, yeah. Uh, I like Firebirds. Uh, it's fun. Yeah. What are the five that are better, if not? Uh. Well, it made my top five. It's somewhere in there. Should I bring my girlfriend or someone who actually would enjoy it? What's your girlfriend look like? That's, yeah, totally. Like, it I, has, I, dude. It, it's just like the first one. It's got shirtless dudes. You'll probably like it. You might even like it. I don't know how you, I mean, it just depends, you know. And, look, I, I took Mover instead of my wife, so I. <laughs> I took you. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> uh, oh, boy. DCS player here. Any sim scenes where I can nerd out on high end gear with the scene? Yes. This is going <laughs> to cause a ruckus. In the entire <laughs> DCS community, this is not a spoiler, but this is a spoiler. Everybody is going to argue with me, but in Top Gun, uh, no, they oh. did that. And um, so in all DCS tournaments here, henceforth, we have to allow Nick that. Bradshaw said. Yeah, they said. So yeah. uh, honestly, here's where you're going to nerd out. I mean, the, the DCS guys are going to be like, why is he in ground map radar? What is... Like, they'll know because they know the different radar modes of the, the Hornet. But the Tomcat, all the Tomcat stuff, when you look, you're sitting in the back seat, you're like, man, that looks like it. You know, when he's doing the wing, uh, all that stuff, that's all DCS folks will for sure get it. Random question has nothing to do with movies. Who would win in a dogfight, Maverick or Doug Masters? Oh, At on. what age? I do, Maverick. <laughs> Maverick, of course, dude. Come on. Hey, Iceman even asked him. I won't spoil it. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Uh, how cool was the operation of the targeting pod while under G-forces? I thought that was really cool. Yeah. They don't want to get in the spoilers. Yeah. It, um, you know, I, I don't know. You know, there was, I don't know. That is one of the cool things. I mean, the, they're essentially buddy bombing. They over G'd the crap out of those targeting pods. Maintenance is so pissed. <laughs> yeah, they're fine, dude. Yeah. D Maintenance disposable like, pods. I hate they bought so many things, cases of uh beer. Yeah, beer, <laughs> probably hard liquor. Um, you know. John Ham could have been Conley's ex husband to create more drama. John Ham so I was Is funny. How old was John Ham? Yeah, he's the cyclone. That that was the funny part to me was they they brought up like Ham's backstory and he's like, I was in class of you know I was in top end class in the eighties and you're like, no dude, you're not that old. Like in the eighties, you were probably in high school. You know that's how big of a disparity this is. You know because it's just a. T for to be talking to a dude that graduated Top Gun in nineteen eighty six, there's just a huge generational gap. Like Maverick, honestly, is more the equivalent of like a contract red air guy that's, you know, retired, a sim instructor, you know, like he's not an 06 that's still actively flying, you know, just in, in general, um, especially after they give his backstory because they give his backstory. They talk about what all he's been doing. And like after the third thing they said, I'm like, well, there is an L.O.R. And there's another LOR. He didn't make 05. Well, dude, there was still to... there was still like a 15 year gap in my mind. Like after yeah. the talk, I was like, "Well, what'd you do the other decade and a half?" <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, it's um, yeah. Oh, what do you think is better, Top Gun or Behind Enemy Lines? Top Gun for sure, for sure. So yeah. Uh, oh wait, that was a good question. The flight scenes were less impressive this time, in my honest opinion. Any idea what they were missing this time over Top Gun? Yeah. Personally, I think it's because of the over-reliance on visual effects. Like, they tried to make things... They tried to make it too perfect, and they lost some of the grit. They lost... Like, because in Top Gun, you could look at it and go, that's real. This one, the line was so blurred between what was obviously real and what was obviously not that you're like... And which is good, because now, you know, your suspension of disbelief and all that stuff, 
But if you're really looking for good flight scenes, you want to know, okay, that's legit. They actually did that. And I think that it's too much. What do you think? Yeah, man. I mean, it was clear to me they were trying to, they were trying to raise it a notch from the original. Um, and <clears throat> I just don't think, I think the original, I mean, had it, had, had it just about right. I mean, I, I agree with you, yeah. dude. The, uh, it was, it was a little much at times. Yeah. Just a, just a little bit. Uh, Maverick was a skunk works gonky. He can't tell you everything he was doing. <laughs> Apparently, Skunk Works has no security at all. <laughs> you just drive your motorcycle up, you hop in, you go fly. It's fine. I mean, nobody nobody really looks at stuff like that. Uh, Gaki, which flying scene was the most accurate? I don't know why they asked well, I mean, you. <laughs> I mean, there was a lot of there was a lot of scenes that were pretty. I mean, as far as the fighting scenes go, I mean, like we were said, they. I would argue pretty much every scene was accurate to some extent some of them were extremely accurate some of them yeah. were like okay that move is accurate but the way they portray it and they amplify it is not so right um you know whereas in like the first ones you know the the not real fighting scenes where every is just everybody in a roller well that's a real there's real planes doing that it's just not something you do tactically in this movie you know they would take actual tactical things and then just kind of stretch it beyond like really what the airplanes can really do and what like people can actually do. Um, yeah. It, it, it's theatrical. I mean, that's yeah. the thing is, you know, it, 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 uh, so this, this question, I'm gonna let you answer Gonky. <laughs> I, I thought they did a good job of just making it entertaining. There was nothing in there. Was, yeah. There I've got, no I've got political messaging. No, man, I've got the woke radar on and it never went off. So <laughs> <laughs> until until the credits, that's the only time I got you triggered until the credits. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, everything true. was was person so, journey person. When, no. when the P-51 flies through the screen, just get up and leave. If you've got. Uh, <laughs> if woke well, that's a good point. Just so you guys know, we sat there and stayed through the whole the thing till they turn the lights thing, back dude. on. There is yes. nothing after the P-51 going by. That's the end of it. There's no after credits. There's no sneak peek to something else. Yeah. We did get a sneak peek exclusive trailer or whatever to Mission Impossible for some reason. That was cool. Remember that? Yeah, at the beginning. So that looks good. Um, no, I thought, oh, wait, here we go. On a scale from not at all to no way in hell, what are the survival chances <laughs> of ejecting at Mach 10? Well... It's unknown if uh, he was in some sort of escape capsule, but however, I would say no chance. <laughs> that would have been a good ending for the movie if they'd have just cut the black right there. And then, like, there will be think, no wait. There will I never you, be another. One. I think you actually said, "Well, that's it." <laughs> yeah, I literally because it it does go to black, and I'm like, "All right, well, good movie. We'll see you guys later." <laughs> see you later. Uh, that was short but sweet. Thanks for that. It's got that cool, cool intro. He does the thing. See you guys Dead. later. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. I can speak as a 15 year old who watched it last night. Nice. I really think the flight scenes were flashy and quick. It may have to do with the tension spans and how people lose focus more nowadays. I, and, and, and Jacob, I think that's a good point for why they put the dark star thing in there in the first place. Like, I think that they thought that if they did like the first one, where it's just focused on naval aviation that somebody might lose. So they had to like, okay, well, we got to, we got to put this in and then we got to put that in. And then we got to add this because we got to top that and we got to keep them interested and we got to keep doing it and, and, and keep, you know, complicating this problem. And then we got to sh show how he's, you know, his name's Maverick. So he has to do this, you know? And it's like, did we though? Did we really? Um, yeah. Oh, here we go. There's an actually. Actually, Gonky. Uh, that's Mach 6, though. They were at Mach 10. What's four more mocks do for you? Well, yeah, that's what I was saying. I mean, I, I don't want to spoil the movie, but, like, if he was in a, in a capsule, sure, because it'd be designed to, you know, for that. I mean, like, the F-111 had a capsule, right? So, um, but... 
if you didn't have a capsule, there's no way. <laughs> uh, let's see here. There's oh, that's for somebody else. Have you guys ever got as nervous for a real life mission as these guys were for the final mission? I know for me, no, because dude, there's this weird thing that happens. It's like even on a training mission, I'm a little bit nervous beforehand, but when like my butt hits the seat, switch goes off, and I, I, <laughs> yeah, I don't know what it is. Mentalize really well, yeah, dude. I mean... Hands start moving right first. It's like let's get started. Okay, don't miss a check in. Okay, there's a check in. Cool. Next step, uh, launch sequence plan. Cool. Departure. Don't get fly violated. Check it. Get the check in right. You know what I'm saying? Like there's all these, and yeah. it, it, like I don't even think about it. Donkey, have you ever lost your loving feeling? Every day. They didn't do that. They didn't sing to they, anybody. Or was that when I was in the bathroom? <laughs> no, they did. Uh, they did. You know, the great balls of fire. Oh yeah, yeah. Um. Anyway, okay. Uh, oh, one more, a couple more. Oh, jeez. Of course, the legacy, dude. Yeah. Hands down. Yeah. Hands is it? I think it is. I think it is. I think you get the experience and also their insistence that every time you move the stick, it's some mechanical clunk. You know, every time the jet, just like transformers, every time it makes some like mechanical noise or it sounds like the space shuttle rocket flying by when they're an afterburner. I, you, I just, think, it, I think you have, like you have to watch, I think you'd be doing a disservice to not see this movie on a big, big screen with big noise. I mean, that's what it's for. Well, I mean, the original used to be the the standard by which you would test your surround sound system. Right. It still is. Like, if you buy a new surround sound system, you're like, right. Top Gun. We got to do Top yeah. Gun. Well, dude, uh, so when, when the original first came out, I was living in Saudi Arabia, and I saw it on my buddy's TV in a VCR. And then, like, when they re-released it in, like, 2005, I went to the theater, and I was like... Yeah. And by this point, I'd watched it, like, 10,000 times. But when I went to the theater, I mean, it was a whole other experience, man. Is this movie going to have anywhere near the same effect on recruiting as the original? I don't think so. I thought about that today. I don't think it will either. I don't think it has anything to do with the movie, to be honest. No, I don't. I, well, it doesn't have anything to do with the movie, but also I think just there's so much more information and so much shorter attention spans now that like... That's what I'm saying. I don't, I don't think know, it has I, anything to do I, with the movie. I think it's... Yeah, I just, I just, I don't, I don't know, man. I don't know. Oh, oh God, I lost the, uh, somebody asked how many G's at Mach 10? Oh, here we go. How many <laughs> G's is Mach 6.9? Uh, you try to turn. I did laugh about that. One. Uh, I'm yeah, going for the dude. speed run and then you start to turn. It's like, no, don't turn. Don't turn. Why are you turning? That slows you down. I made the same mistake. Uh, Pete Mitchell or Topper Harley? <laughs> Somewhere in the middle. <laughs> uh, I, I well, you can't ask me that. That's uh, that's that's. Does, that does it matter? What we were talking does it about matter? Or, yeah. Does it matter if the mover person went to the ladies' room? <laughs> yeah. Don't don't ask me. Mach six point nine is forty two Gs according to Randolph. Oh boy, here we go. Tom Cruise has ex teased an extreme addition that would cause motion sickness in the audience. You know, honestly, like. I think it depends. My wife, she can't watch certain movies because it does the visuals and mess with her. She gets sick. So maybe. A couple of scenes, Rooster's head smoked off the canopy. Is it really that bumpy of a ride? Can be. If you're not flying. Dude, I've got <laughs> I, I've got some pretty gnarly marks on my helmet. <laughs> Dude, well, I can't remember if it was the Hornet or Viper. One of those, oh. if you got your if you were over your shoulder, you could get your head stuck between the canopy yes. and the is that the Hornet or the Viper? Is that single a hornet C thing? Horn, single C hornet, you could wedge, you could wedge, yeah. wedge yourself. I've done it before. It's not fun. Uh, anyway, uh, you were wanting the sequel to live up to the experience you had when you were a kid. You evaluate movies differently, more naively as a kid than an adult. Not a fair comparison. That's, That's the true. only comparison I mean, we have, though. I mean, right. it's the only comparison right. we have. Like, they took thirty six years to make this movie. Like, I. I can't help that I've had a career since then, you know. I. It's not that honestly. It's not that like one movie's better than the other. I think. I mean, they're both awesome. Well, we're not gonna go to jail, but I will say <laughs> this: 
Um, I will say this. They did a lot better. This is one of the first movies I've seen where they did a better job of not trying to make Sam's Wiley e. Coyote. Where, yeah, you true. know, they, you know, because that's been a complaint, like behind enemy lines, other stuff where they're like, you know, the dude follows him around with unlimited thing. Like they made it more of a, and they got the smoke in the air stuff right too, you know, where the missile either got defeated or it hit something. And that was it. Like, gotta turn this way. Oh, crap. Like, and I think in, in some of that, sorry. And some of that, like that F-16 video where it's a Sam guy doing all the stuff and, you know, he keeps getting launched at by the, the Sams in Iraq. It it kind of gave you that feeling of that video. So I think they did a really good job with that part of just showing like, holy crap, dude, it's just Sam after Sam after Sam after Sam. Now, granted, there's one part of that that was really stupid that's in the previews. It's in the trailer. Sacrificial. Oh, was that in the trailer? It's in the trailer. In the Are trailer. you sure? I'm 100% sure. Yeah. Yeah. That was pretty stupid. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was really dumb. It, it, caught, it caught me by surprise when that happened in the movie. I was like, oh, whoa, oh, didn't see that coming. Yeah. Yeah. Now, anyway. Uh, was Maverick so good you'd buy it at digital or Blu-ray even though you've already seen it? Oh, I'm going to have a copy. Maybe. Maybe so. Because I think, I honestly think it's one of those movies you have to watch a couple times to really appreciate it. Like, I think initial initial impressions are okay, but I think a few times to kind of pick up on little things you missed. And now, I also have to confess, too, I spent the first 38 minutes hangry. Because we were at the movie tavern, and I specifically ordered my meal to arrive at showtime at 7, 8 p.m. 1900 for you military types. And as of 1930, it had not arrived, and it finally arrived at 1938, and I was very hungry by this time. 1900 was probably too late for the food, because I was already hungry. So, first 38 minutes, you really can't get a good gauge of what was going on. Because a mover was hangry. So, and then they tried to give Gonky somebody else's food. Gonky wasn't hangry. Gonky, you got your food before me, and yours was supposed to show up like after me. You just showed I know, up. And, I, oh, I'm gonna some food. I, ordered, I ordered it like 30 minutes after you, and it got there before yours. Yeah. I got to watch him eat his burger. So, that could be why I'm so angry about the Dark Star scene, because I was really hungry. <laughs> Gonky, what would be the plot? This sounds like this guy's probably some like Hollywood producer, like. I man, I I don't know. I, the I'm not I, man. I'm not a writer, so plot wise, I I just take it. It is what it is. But you know, even after I first watched it, I was like, well, I mean, they, they gave it a good effort, but I I think I think they could have done done a little better. But I don't have any details. Mover, you're the you're the writer. I don't know. I would never give such a uh, here. No, because anything I say is going to spoil it. Um, and it's going to spoil it. I, I'm, we can talk about that on another video. But anything I say is going to spoil it right now. I mean, there's some there's some really good fixes that you could have done to, to do that. And it, it you, you wouldn't have been able to name it Top Gun Maverick. That's the first thing. Like, it wouldn't have been so Pete Mitchell centric. You know, that would have been more of a surprise. To, to me, I think that would have made it better is to focus on just like they did in the original focus on the core group of people and then have him be more of a supporting actor, just like his supporting role and not be, you know, this 57, 60 year old dude that's trying to have one more last day. Like, I just, I don't know. I, I think that would have been better personally, but, um, uh, do you think the pilots depicted are stereotypical of U.S. fighter pilots? No. No, it's horribly not. Wizzos? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and so, like, uh, Glenn Powell's character, like, you want to talk the writing thing. You know, the character development in that was kind of weak just because they showed some development but they didn't they didn't like so the first one they had Iceman right and Iceman started off as this dude you hated and but it, it, you didn't you didn't hate him because he was an outright dick 
You just hated him because he was confident and he had a different way of doing things than Maverick. And he believed his way was right. And that's, that's why eventually they became friends. The way they wrote uh, Hangman was just, he's just a douchebag and he's plotting and doing his own thing. And then eventually, you know, he, he changes a little bit, but they don't really show a progression. I think that was a lost opportunity from a writing perspective because, well, they're just like, well, we need to have a douchebag. Okay, you're the douchebag and we're going to make you, you know, third act, not a douchebag. But there's nothing in between that to really fix it. And every character except Maverick was almost just like a, and, and maybe Miles Teller was like a cardboard just a cardboard cutout. They're like, well, we just need somebody here. Here's the guy. We just need a token, you know, asshole. Here's the here's the girl that's going to do some stuff. You know, I mean, it, it wasn't very character driven in that sense. So, I don't know. Yeah, I I mean, it's pretty much Maverick and Rooster. <laughs> like, was the, it, the, it was Maverick and Rooster. Which was um, fine, for, which which is fine. I, I think that's fine. But you're right. I mean, now that I'm thinking about it, the other characters, like, I really don't know them other, other than, uh, uh, you know, Sam Sponges. <laughs> well, and even then, like, you know, and they showed this in the preview, so it's not a spoiler, but like they try to, well, they call him Hangman because he leaves you hanging. And it's like, that's so stupid. Like, first of all, that's bad dialogue. Second, that's his whole backstory. Like, that was the backstory they gave this guy. He, could, he leaves you hanging. Versus when you go to the first one, like Iceman, you know, yes, they do say that's how he flies, ice cold, no mistakes. You know, you get bored, scared, tired, or stupid. But Iceman we didn't like because of his, what he did. We didn't like, we did not like him because of stuff other people said. In fact, somebody saying he flies ice cold is actually a compliment. So other people thought highly of him, and he just had this, you know, 1v1 mentality with Maverick. And that worked. Hangman was just a dick because he was a dick, which is not unrealistic. I've known some top yeah. people <laughs> that are just like that. But, you know, I mean, it just it's not a character movie. It, you know, you're not going to watch this and go, oh, this is very character driven. So, um, Mover, do you agree this was the best portrayal of the effects of G-Forces, G-Locks yet in the movie? Yes. And I thought that they over explained it to, to people that already should know that. Like, they spend an inordinate amount of time of Maverick going, well, when you pull Gs, the G-forces, which is good because the audience doesn't know, you know, so now people will understand better. But it's really insulting if you expect <laughs> this group of Top Gun graduates who've been flying for, like, six years now, they're like, oh, man, I'm, yeah, okay, yeah, I gotta make sure I do that. That's yeah, why I'm I almost sure. pass out. No, yeah, that's, that's why I g lock <laughs> myself here. Oh, my God. Uh... Uh, did you guys understand the hand signals? Maverick yeah. didn't understand the hand signals. No, he like, they didn't. gave him a, a real hand signal. They're like, three, right. you know, and your Maverick's <laughs> like, <laughs> like, dude, he gave you a normal one. I think I Maverick mean, one was you just. I, know. I think he was playing dumb. I think Maverick actually knew, but it was yeah. part of the whole playing dumb. But that was a cool scene too, though. Like, even though no spoilerism wasn't there, that was a cool scene. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> don't, uh, don't spoil it. Uh, Gonk, you're a bike guy. What was that? That brand new ninja he was Dude. driving. What was All that? Right. He swapped so, bikes. You know what? Here's here's the thing. I, I have to watch the movie again. This is a detail I saw. So you're right. He's got a he's got a, he's got the old bike, then he's got the new bike. <clears throat> Up front on the fairing, it's Yamaha. But I'm, I I swear, on the back fender, I thought that they had wrote ninja. It said ninja. It's yes. no, it said ninja. Okay, well then Yamaha doesn't Are those make tutor? ninja. Oh, it's, really? See, I didn't even catch that. I was just like, yeah. oh, he's in a new Ninja. I saw the LED lights. Did it say Ninja back there? It did. 1,000% sure. said Ninja. Because I was like, oh, he's in a new Ninja. I wonder how much yeah. those cost. Because while my buddies ride Yamahas, I make fun of them. Because I saw the symbol up front. And then I was like, wait a minute. What kind of bike is this? So... Hey, we need to get a Hawkeye guy on here to answer that question. <laughs> yeah, well, he he did not he he turned down our bro date. I think he's on vacation. Uh, here we go. Old one is a Kawasaki GPZ five hundred. Latest one is a Kawasaki H two. Dude, there's the yeah. I'm telling you, I, I saw the uh, the tuning fork. I have to watch it again. You should review Hot Shots Part Two, even though it's a parody of Rambo. This is a parody of Rambo three, actually. There's some Rambo three 
stuff in this one. Uh, that's lying. These monks took a vow of chastity like their fathers and their fathers before. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, uh, man. Look at that. Thanks, translator. Uh, it's been 36 years. He needed another <laughs> Yeah. Uh, oh, not much oh, different. Gonky. Wrong. Dude. Hold on. Now I got to oh. look. Did Maverick buzz a tower in the sequel? Wait, don't spoil it. Yeah. Uh, he, he, I can't say. Oh, here we go. Did you just uncover the one inaccuracy of the movie? That's the only one. I think we uncovered the one inaccuracy of Gonky. Gonky just got schooled in the comments. Uh, dude, I've been wrong oh, many times. Gonky, this question's for you. Is a fighter jet get destroyed by birds that easily in real life? Because you talked about this after the movie. You don't have well, to spoil they... it. Just, just tell your tell. Say what you said after the movie. <laughs> Literally, like my first solo in the Super Hornet on takeoff, I literally hit like twenty five birds. Um, you know, I did the whole ah, duck behind the hood, like that's gonna do anything. And um, dude, the Super Hornet is built like a tank. Uh, it didn't even phase it. I don't know how many went down the engines, but I came back and landed, and there were little red dots. I think I counted 25 or six of them all over. And, you know, the sad ones, because the flaps were down, was like the half dot, because, you know, they were trying to... <laughs> <laughs> so, like, he almost made it, man. But, um, yeah, dude, I, I, there's there's one scene in there. I was, I was like, man, I don't... I don't this ain't a, this ain't no sky bus. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm turning on the APU, we're yeah. going into the Hudson. Yeah, no, no, dude, it'll take a whole flock of birds. Did Bo Gonky ever buzz the tower? I buzzed the tower before. Yeah, we got that video of you. Uh, here we go. Best YouTube yeah. comment on the music video for Top Gun theme. The dislikes likes are actually likes. They're just inverted. <laughs> dude, that's awesome. <laughs> How many birds were on the safety report? That's like, like a whole family, a generation. <laughs> it's definitely a carnivore. Uh, yeah, right. It's the same natop squall for the EF. It's EF and A through D, right? No, it's yeah, uh, I... EF A A through D is 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 set. It's the same natop squall, but there's right. currency. Right, yeah. there's oh it is. It's all one Wait a minute, no. No, it's, it's two D. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It's A through yeah, D. Because I had the A yeah. through D. Yeah, I had both and I expired uh on the legacy my towards the end. What attention to detail did you thoroughly enjoy? No spoilers. I thought like like on the ingress where he's like, uh what was there? Dagger one? Dude, he said that perfectly. He's like that, dagger that... one picture. <laughs> oh dude. <laughs> we both looked at one another like Wow. Yeah. Like, I, I'm not yeah. sure. I, I actually ever said it that cleanly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he sounded like, I mean, yeah. dude, he sounded crisp. Yeah. He sounded like a flight lead. Um, they've, they've got that somewhere in Top Gun. They're like, all right, this is how you make that call. And they're just going to hit play. <laughs> yeah. Top Gun recommends you say it this way. Uh, and then they, then obviously the, the making fun of the Wizzos and Fat Amy wasn't good enough to do the mission. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> we spent all this money but no fat amy for us we're gonna get the super hornets and a 60 year old 06 uh to do it but um yeah the that is uh explained in the movie whether it's right or wrong uh, i believe they they don't ever say what they are Although it's funny because they're like, these are fifth gen. We don't know how to fight them. And they spend no time actually figuring out how to fight the fifth gen fighters. They just fight each other. Um, but yeah, they look like Su-57s. Do you gonna live a spoiler one? Yes, it's called Mover Ruins Movies, and we will break down this movie. There is lots to ruin. Because uh, we ruined it real time in the theater while we were watching it going, oh yeah, that is... Uh. <laughs> I didn't notice. Gonky, did you notice um, 
did they get the 20 millimeter sound right? Did it sound like a, a 20 millimeter? Honestly, I didn't even, uh, I didn't even pay attention. You know, there was there was one scene in the Tomcat where, I mean, because I'm pretty sure that's the only time they were using the gun. I thought, it's, yeah, nothing stood out. When he was, when he was empty, there was some, uh, I mean, when the gun's empty, it's empty. Right, it doesn't keep trying to spin. Right, it's, yeah, it knows it's empty. Uh, is the felon CGI? Oh, yeah, I hope so. <laughs> hope so. Uh, what happened to Flight of the Intruder? Copyright jail. Twice. It's on its second run of copyright jail right now. Wombat is getting no credit. Dude, Wombat and I did Flight of the Intruder, uh, which is tough because there wasn't much wrong with it, if anything at all. So Great it's really movie. just me and Wombat watching it. And like, oh, that's pretty <laughs> <laughs> that guy sounds like uh, uh. and so uh yeah uh have you ever flown under a bridge gonky no did the hornet do as good of job for this like the tomcat of the original or did the tomcat have to save this one too it's no spoilers you know uh when they re-released -re the original like in 05 i think it was and so i watched all that behind the scenes and I'm pretty sure in there Tom Cruise is said to have because they had Hornets in 1986 like that was actually the F-18 was actually the newer jet uh, in 1986 or 85 when they filmed this but he saw the Tomcat and I mean is he saw the presence of the airplane and said that's the airplane that has to be in this movie and I, I mean yeah. didn't they though I thought they did show him making out who the old people uh it was just a little bit it wasn't yeah pg how did you watch top gun maverick seated i was laying down i was in the. i was seat. dude i with the heat on <laughs> we went, dude i had we the, went the to the Pepsi. yeah we went to the movie oh, tavern they awesome. were 38 minutes late with my food in case i didn't mention that uh <laughs> pretty pretty upset about that free popcorn though uh, yeah. Uh, is it realistic to have a Top Gun? Well, th that d watch the movie because that's not uh, that's not the plot. Did they make it seem like it was faster? Yeah, they sped up. They sped up the whole thing. Uh, has Gonky ever done a barrel roll right after takeoff? Ooh, is this someone that knows me? Uh, uh, world at War for Life? Uh, yeah, actually. Did the audience cheer? Yes. And they laughed at some stupid jokes. Like, there were, there was one joke, and it, it's in the 13-minute thing, you know, where they're like, where am I? And the kid, he doesn't, like, he doesn't, he tries to say Earth, but you're like, what did he say? He say, and everybody thought it was just so funny, and you're just like, you th you saw that coming. You saw, this whole thing was, of course, gawky, because you're the kid. You are, yeah. People clapped at the end too. Hey there, mover. Love watching your reaction, especially Top Gun. I wonder if Maverick did the watch the birdie stunt. Well, we won't spoil it. Did you guys get a free poster? I did. Did you get your poster? Oh, dude. What? No. I I should have worn my pen. <laughs> hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Nocturnal has really paid attention to this movie, dude. <laughs> uh, he's, he's into the breathing patterns and everything. Tomcat is badass to look at, but do you think it's overrated as a dogfighter? Yes. I don't know. I yes. I've yes. I've never very much. I've so. never Mover and I've never fought one in real life. But I think it no, is. No, but I've talked to I've. I mean, you talk to like Oral and those guys, and they're like, "Yeah, dude, I fought a Viper and got my ass handed to me. I fought a Hornet guy, and unless he was like brand new, I'd get my ass handed to me." Like those dudes got their butts kicked a lot. They did. But as an interceptor, dude, I don't think it's. 
Oh well, yeah, I'll, but this was Dogfighter. You know, this yeah, is sure. the whole yeah. plot of the movie. Uh, is IMAX good for this? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. For sure. For sure. Uh, this one's for you, Gonky. I was like this during those parts. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me when I can open my eyes, Mover. Yeah. <laughs> so be honest. How many Mover ruins with Gonky's videos will it take to cover this? Well, so we could probably skip like the sailboat scene because we don't know anything about it. Um, <laughs> Looks real. We can, we can skip the whole Dark Star thing because I can just ruin that by saying no. Like that's just just no, and then move on to the next thing. Um, I mean, I mean, we could probably do it in one. The real question is, how long will it be in Paramount jail? Because Paramount owns the rights. Paramount is the one that's got Flight of the Intruder in jail right now. <laughs> Odds of us seeing this in the next six months are probably low. So, um, yeah. Monkey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Whew. Tough crowd. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Does the intro sequence hold up? I think so. Uh, you mean if the, you're saying the, is the new one good? Yes, I think so. It is good, but man, I you can't beat the the original no, one. It's you better. can't you can't beat the first one, but the first one, dude. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> we all are. <laughs> Thanks, uh, Dead Axis. <laughs> oh, here we go. C model dudes will really like the shirtless dudes. Yeah, and the well, see, that's the thing is the girl, like she's wearing like sweatpants. It's kind of sexist because the girl's wearing like a shirt and sweatpants, and all the guys are naked. Like, how does this make sense? Ah, uh, dude, she had a she, she had, had an athletic. Bikini. Yeah, it was but it wasn't sort as of two revealing. piece. No, like, is to it a, to a ratio? It wasn't like you didn't, I thought it was, there wasn't it was appropriate. Like it's it's what I would expect. That's to the see. problem is it was appropriate. The other ones were not appropriate. Well, dude, the guys are just everyone's in everyone's in swimsuits except the Wizzo. The Wizzos <laughs> so. were all wearing t shirts. That's true. <laughs> but it's pretty sexist to me that the guys are shirtless and in shorty and, shorts. And she's and not women, Well, I mean, we're I'm about equality, Gonky. Fair I am you too. You're right. Dude. Everyone, should, if 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 one's an object, we should all be objects. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> did you, did you, what Wombat is having a stroke in the comments. What is happening? <laughs> she just got off the Instagram. <laughs> Have you two ever tell how? Oh. Yes, we. Well, except Gonky. Gonky can't. No. <laughs> YouTube ban. Was Ed Harris? Ed Harris was in the movie, wasn't he? Oh yeah, he, uh, he was that, yeah. the admiral. He's yeah, good. The, the very first admiral that they had to go talk to. It's good, yeah. Uh, did the movie live up to expectations of it? I think it did. It's hard to have expectations when it was like pushed so many years because of the pandemic and all that stuff. You know, it's just like okay. <laughs> Gonky, is it classified? Would you have to kill us if you told us? No, Gonky would just get canceled if he told us. And my channel would be banned from... from there would events. be... No, C.W. LeMoyne would, would cease to exist. Cease to exist. <laughs> More so than it already is. Um, P51. How long would you guys last in a dogfight with Maverick in his prime? Man, Tomcat, I'd win, dude. 100% hands down. Like that confidence? <laughs> I've thought about that question a lot. <laughs> we already talked about this. Yeah, I, yeah, probably, I'm with Mover. The opening scene didn't. I, yeah. So this is a good point, and this was so we we're not spoiling this because it was on one of the preview clips. They fixed this. So in the first one, they had this misconception that we took showers all the time. Like we'd fly in the 
and take our gear off in the shower together. And I don't remember any shower scenes in this one. Right? Was there a shower no. scene? But what was silly was when they're fighting, everybody's in the ready room wearing all their gear. Did you know? Yeah. <laughs> Listening to it on the ODO radio, the bass radio. So they're all sitting around the bass radio in flight gear, listening to the fights as they go. Can't say I've ever done that or seen anybody do that. They're but... all on alert, dude. <laughs> they're on they're on BFM <laughs> they're all, alert with Maverick. They're, they're all on alert. Yeah, well, yeah. you know, back in the day, though, in defense of that shower scene back in the day, I don't think guys were allowed to be in their flight suit unless they were flying. So they get back from flying, take a shower, get in their khakis. Do well, I talked to so well. I talked to <laughs> Oregon about this. They actually move the lockers to the showers for these scenes. No, oh, where, okay. where it's film is not their lockers don't exist there. Like they I moved his locker to a shower to make those scenes happen because he's like gotcha. they needed because he said they told him no and they're like no 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 we want it to be sex appeal and you know all these guys and testosterone and stuff. That'll be a dude. I'm telling you, that's gonna be a great video. He sent me like all kind of cool pictures and stuff, dude. It's gonna be epic. I'm so excited yeah, about that interview. That is awesome. Gonky OnlyFans. Doesn't I mean, know what that is. That, is. is that a statement or is that a <laughs> Gonky? Would Gonky wear his swim trunks if you had to shower with everyone? <laughs> dude. dude. <laughs> I'm just I'm not gonna say anything. I don't <laughs> Were the call signs too nice? I thought they were just silly. Like you wouldn't call somebody. I, I just didn't think the call signs really I dude, I thought about that. I'm like, why is he rooster? Like Rooster's why? a real call sign. It is a real call sign, but I'm just saying, like, I, I agree with you that I don't know. It's just splitting hairs again. Uh they did not fix the AC. There was a scene where a Rooster was standing there sweating, and you're like, "Yeah, but Hangman wasn't." Like when they were oh, okay. like beak yeah. to beak, like like Rooster's sweating, and Hangman's not. I'm like, "What is going on here?" <laughs> Does the pilot brief happen in a hangar classroom in front of a giant American flag? I swear, Always. I thought he was going to get up there and be like, "You could be shoveling shit in Louisiana, or you could be going to war," like totally patent, but. Yeah, it says goose is rooster. A real Navy call sign would have called him pigeon or something. You know, they'd have been more derogatory towards. Yeah, or cook goose or something like that. Was the music good? I thought so. Wasn't a huge fan of the beach music. Thought that was a little emo or hippie or whatever. I just, But the rest of the music is good. Uh, no, you're not supposed to. You can physically. I mean, I couldn't. Yeah. <clears throat> Music was good. Not just, not sure for this one. No, it was good. It's just because it's the same mo music. Gosling, now we're getting into bird nerd stuff. I don't know. <laughs> Dude. I do have a copy of the poster on hand. Well, it's, it's in my Hellcat. Hellcat! I did yell Tomcats. Yeah. Uh, although Doug tried to get it going a lot sooner while I was eating because the food finally showed up when the Tomcat showed up and I wasn't about to stop eating for Tomcat <laughs> purposes. Uh, Firefox. Yeah, I have to do Firefox. I've never seen the movie. I don't know. Oh, it's, it's good. Is there really a bar? No, we did a breakdown of the production agreement. They built that on North Island on the beach and then tore it down right after filming. So they didn't even get to keep it. Are you I've serious? I didn't know seen, that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Also never, they also remodeled the E, no, the C2 ready room for the movie because I've never seen a ready room that nice. Oh, yeah. Just for the movie, they remodeled it because they probably walked in there like, <clears throat> yeah. Anyone named Jaffo? Uh, Blue Thunder? No. No, that wouldn't apply here. What is the most insulting call sign you have seen in real life? Ass face. That's got to be the worst. Uh, yeah. It was so, so bad they renamed him. Yeah. So was, fitting. Was, <laughs> just was, kidding. Was, I'm just kidding. It was. Uh, 
There's a lot. What is your opinion on the vibes in the bar scene? I, I thought all that was cringy. All the dialogue, all that stuff. It was just, they did get, well, they did get the, the bell thing right. Yeah. You know, all the bell stuff. Yeah. You're like, oh, they got that. It's just, you know, weird because they're extras. Like they should have turned around and talked to the extras and been like, hey guys, do you guys ever wear khakis? Like, I don't even know where mine are. Like that would have been the answer. Like Only when you're in trouble. Right. Not in the bar. Oh. But then Rooster shows up and he's wearing like, you know, whatever. He's just hanging out in his well, so t-shirt. He- so here's the thing is like at, uh, you know, at the O club, it's kind of like people show up at the end of the day. So some people do show up in Civi. Some people, you know how it is. We work, hey, we'll debrief at the club, right? So you're in your flight suit debriefing. You know, if you're doing some staff administrative stuff, you might be in your khakis. So it's not uncommon to see a smattering of attire. I tell you what is uncommon though, and it's sad is you never see that many people in the Oak Club these days because the cops hang out oh, at the no. front door. And and the North Island Oak Club is very small. It's like yeah. a hole in the wall bar. So that's probably yeah. why they had to build it. There. Which was interesting because the movie's <laughs> called Top Gun and they might fly at the Fallon ranges, but they never actually go to Fallon. Everything is a debt at, at Nasney. So it's like which I get because yeah. it's, I mean, that's a beautiful base. I mean, that's a yeah. very, very, very pretty, but you're like, Hey man, there's nothing Top Gun about Top Gun. Like, yeah. At least they should have shown the pain of being Fallon. They should have been like, <laughs> Dude. you know, yeah. in the queue, the yeah. Wi-Fi doesn't work. They should have had that queue scene. You know, remember when the uh, top Maverick and uh, goose are talking about washing out. They needed that scene with him trying to like FaceTime his wife and like, he couldn't get any signal or something just to, you know, yeah. Show, show what they go through. Density altitude's uh, too tall, too high out there, dude. How realistic is the speed of the SR seventy two in the movie? Should have just done Mach twenty. <laughs> yeah. Why? Why stop there? Oh yeah, we're supposed to finish now. All right, it's been an hour and a half, dude. This was only supposed to be a thirty minute video. Gawky, parting mm. shots. Uh, no, it's worth it. Uh, I'm gonna see it again. I'm- I think if you at all like fighter jets, military, even just Tom Cruise, it's an entertaining movie. You don't have to know anything about military aviation, or you can know a ton like we do, and it is enjoyable. And I, I really Wait, can appreciate. Do, we, do you. we know a ton of? We don't know much. I know well, anybody, dude. We're the two biggest idiots on the. We don't. They don't. We don't know anything. <laughs> we know a little more, dude. <laughs> <laughs> a little more than nothing is what we know, but. Yeah, I just think it's uh, it's a great movie, and I think uh, it's totally worth it. And I, I I enjoyed it, and I'm gonna watch it again. Okay, and don't forget to save twenty percent if you want the TV. It's a good starter, you know. Hey, if I'm just trying to get into this, I'm using this on the PlayStation, whatever. Um, should be pretty cool. So thank you, uh, Thrustmaster. Thank you, Gonky, for doing this. Well, I know this is uh, you know, it was it's you're a busy man, and it's hard to get a kitchen pass these days. <laughs> so um we'll be back next time probably with wombat not gonky so wombat will be uh on here to answer all the questions and stuff thanks for watching stay in school don't do drugs <laughs> that's right all right see you guys see next you guys. time <laughs>